Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to Epic Comic Book Wednesday. This is a world's finest collaboration between Michael K. Vaughn and myself, where we combine the forces of stately Vaughn Manor and Hyde Cottage to talk about the comic books on which we've wasted our youths. But not today. It can't possibly be true today. Because today we are talking about a comic book that Michael K. Vaughn didn't even know about two weeks ago and certainly did not read in his youth. And we can't be talking about a comic that I was reading in my youth uh, since this comic book came out in 1959. And I was certainly not a little boy in 1959. I couldn't be a little boy in 1959 and still be a sexy, smoldering YouTube influencer in 2023 going on 2024. Fortunately, my great-great-grandfather read this issue. Uh, and you might say, well, were American comic books published in Donegal? in the mid-19th century, uh, to which I would say, zip it. <laughs> that must be the answer. It can't be anything else. Uh, we are... We have had a rocky year. <laughs> As we do every year. Because I horned in on this whole thing. This was originally a feature on Michael's channel. So he gets to pick. Since I horn my way in, he gets to pick what we do. And, well, <laughs> his taste in comic books is is deplorable. <laughs> Nonsense. It precisely coincides with my own. <laughs> uh, every once in a while, he picks something just awful. <laughs> but this time around, thanks to the kindness of one of his viewers, this time around, he picked something that is as much of a bullseye as a bullseye gets. For me. Not maybe so much for him. <laughs> he picked Adventure Comics number 259. Uh, the Blind Boy of Steel. And there on the cover, you see that this was 10 cents. Which was one quarter of a weekly allowance. One fourth. That was This was one quarter. 25% of a weekly allowance was 10 cents. The whole of it. The whole, one quarter of the whole thing was was 10 cents. So you had to care about what you were getting to get this thing at the dry goods store. You had to care about it. And uh, Superboy was, at this point in DC Comics history, this was in the, in the 1950s, Superboy was an amazingly popular character with his own book and also adventure comics in the same way that Superman had action comics and Superman. And... Uh, what these are, are the adventures of Superman when he was a teenager in Smallville. This is not a clone. This is not uh, the son of Superman. This is not any, uh, any of the other characters who have briefly or even now hold the name Superboy. This, this, is, this is Clark Kent as a teenager in Smallville as Superboy. And uh, they are wonderful. These adventures are wonderful. They are absolutely wonderful. Of course, this takes place before the Stanley virus infected comic books. And suddenly, comic book readers wanted closed-circuit continuity and verisimilitude. Verisimilitude in a comic book about a teenage alien who's having adventures in the Midwest. You want verisimilitude with that. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> this took place blissfully before that. Adventure Comics started out without Superboy. Started out as just a, an anthology comic book series that, of a type that re readers really liked. It was re really sort of the norm that you would buy a comic book for 10 cents and you would get five adventures, three adventures, something like that. It was not expected that you would get one poorly drawn with no backgrounds adventure that would be a cliffhanger for for your 10 cents, much less for five ninety nine, which is what they cost now. Uh, that was not expected. Instead, it was that you would get three nifty adventures. And those adventures would have a nifty gimmick. Ah, uh -huh. you'd see the nifty gimmick. You'd see it. You'd think, ah, oh, was that wild? You'd read about it a little. You'd you'd be done, and then you'd forget about it. Then then you forget about it. You might take issue number two fifty nine of Adventure Comics that you bought for ten cents. You might take this, I don't know, out tramping in the fields with your dogs. Maybe you've got this, maybe you've got a book, maybe you've got something else, and you're going to do a bit of reading for the whole of a beautiful afternoon. Maybe you go all the way to the end of a, of a field, you figure you're going to lean against a fence post, 
and do some reading in the endless, gorgeous Iowa after, uh, afternoon. And maybe while you're there, some pigs wander over because you're not always there and pigs are curious and they're very sociable. And maybe they decide, well, it's you. We know you. We really like you and you like them because they're wonderful. And smooching with them is even more satisfying than smooching with a dog, unless you have an enormous dog. Uh, and maybe in the course of that of the, those elaborate greetings, your dogs have, have long since lolled off in the grass and started to doze. They are not alarmed by the pigs anymore, nor do they need to boss them around. Maybe the pigs start to get real comfortable, too. Oh, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to relax and hang out for the afternoon. And maybe in the course of that, you find yourself leaning back, not against the fence post, but against a big hog. Who's perfectly happy to have you do that. Perfectly happy to have you make a pillow out of his enormous... Uh, rib cage, and so you lean against him and you read this story and maybe when you're done you just drop it on the ground because it was it was a lot of fun it was exactly what it was supposed to do it did exactly what it was supposed to do it told you a fun story the fun story is what you can see on the cover here well if superboy were blind he'd need a seeing eye dog <laughs> and he already has a dog <laughs> so what if what if that seeing eye dog was crypto the super dog <laughs> There you go. Now, I know, I know all of you, all of you have been infected by the Stanley virus. So you hear me say what I just said, that last sentence, and you say, and? <laughs> and? Do his, do his supervillains learn that he's blind to take advantage of this, to capture, decapitate the Kents and rape their dead bodies? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's none of that. No, it's, it's just, if he were blind, he'd need a seeing eye dog. And he's already got a dog. It would be Crypto, the seeing eye dog. <laughs> That's it. No, no. What your Stanley infected brain is doing right now is a sign of your illness. What it's doing right now, you should stop it from doing. That's it. That's all. There isn't any more to it than that. Is it going to traumatize him? Will it, will it cause him as an adult to, to access forbidden buried memories and incinerate someone with his heat vision who, who happens to be blind? <sighs> no, <laughs> no, it's not going to do any of that, you weirdo. It's just a fun story. That's all. If he's blind, he'll need a seeing eye dog. And he's already got a dog. He'll need a super seeing eye dog. Get it? <sighs> <laughs> it's, it's hopeless. <laughs> All right. Well, I, but anyway, this story was written by the great, the holy, the all revered Otto Binder, who is great and holy and all revered because in, a, in one moment that he didn't remember at all, he thought up the Legion of Superheroes. Uh, and in this story, uh, Superboy, who is a teenage super hottie who wears skin tight spandex and fights crime in the American Midwest. He's having a normal day. He's he's thought up a new precaution that he should take with his platoon of Superboy robots. He has used his he has he has super recall, so he can remember the super science of his dead homeworld Krypton. So he uses that plus his superpowers to make identical robots, Superboy robots who are identical to him. Uh, and again. You're not supposed to think about that, okay? Because they obviously aren't robots. Robots can't do what his robots can. They can't. Robots can't simulate a human being. They're they're more than that. They're androids, and they have vocal boxes, and they obviously have some sort of computer cognition because they can reason from A to B. They don't need him to instruct them what to do in in elaborate situations. They can reason from a point A to point B to point C. They can reason so well that they can pretend to be him in situations. Which is why he built them. That's why he built these robots, so that he could effectively be in two places at one time, which is one of the only superpowers that he doesn't have, and which is necessary if you're going to maintain a secret identity, which he very much is. He is a normal teenager, Clark Kent, who goes to Smallville High. And that nosy Lana Lang is always trying to figure out whether or not there's any weird connection between him and Superboy, because she never sees the two of them together. Well, if you never see the two of them together, you can solve that problem if you have Superboy robots. So they come in handy quite a bit. Uh, uh, and obviously, when you see this cover, just the cover, you're going to think, oh my god, how's Clark Kent going to go to school if he's blind? Won't Lana be tipped off? That's all you're supposed to think. You're not supposed to go any further than that. Wow, isn't that fun? How's he going to get out of this? How's he going to hide this fact? What's going to happen? Not... Is it going to form a suppressed traumatic memory that causes him to incinerate Daredevil later on in life when he encounters a blind person? No. 
<laughs> now, that's the Stan Lee virus. That's not what these comics did. What you see on the cover is the reason to spend your 10 cents, your hard-earned 10 cents. Not really hard-earned. <laughs> if, if pigs really like you, they'll do anything you ask them to do. You don't even, have, you don't even have to know how to speak to them. They'll do anything they, that you ask them to do if they, if they really like you. The key is to get them to like you. And that you have to be decent with them. You have to treat them like people, which is what they are. <laughs> anyway, oh my God, this video. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm going to try to, to bring this back under control. Uh, at the beginning of this story, uh, Superboy has a new task. He has come up with a new idea. It's important not only that his Superboy robots know how to imitate him. They can fly. They have super strength. They're invulnerable. They have heat vision. How he's able to give them all these powers, we're not supposed to question. You're not supposed to question it. He makes super robots. They apparently have all his superpowers. Or at least reasonable facsimiles of them. Enough to fool people. But they, the, the Superboy robots in the course of Adventure Comics and Superboy do a whole bunch of amazing things. Uh, it's fine that they can imitate him, but he, he, th he thinks it's important also that they be convincing in weakness. So his, his telescopic vision has shown him that a kryptonite meteor has struck the Earth on an uninhabited planet, on an uninhabited island. Apparently he's scanning the skies all the time for kryptonite meteorites, as you would be too if they were the only thing that could hurt you, I guess. So he realizes that there's a kryptonite meteorite on this island. He thinks there's an ideal opportunity to fly there with all of his robots uh, in order to show them how kryptonite weakens him so that they can simulate that so that they can simulate being weakened by kryptonite because if they don't simulate that at a key moment well somebody might think maybe these are robots why anyone would think that instead of just thinking well maybe kryptonite doesn't bother superboy anymore you're not supposed to think you're not supposed to ask these questions superboy wants to demonstrate to these robots how kryptonite affects him so that they can imitate it and they obey, because in addition to building these Superboy robots, all of whom look like him, he had to sculpt his own face a hundred times, a thousand times, who knows how many times, he had to sculpt his own chest, his own pelvis, his own buttocks. He had to sculpt all of that on these. These, these Superboy robots were naked before they had costumes on. Uh, in addition to all of that, he's also programmed all of them to refer to him as Master. 16-year-old boy. You're not supposed to think the things you're thinking right now. You're not supposed to wonder if he killed his parents. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, so they all fly off to this island. And, you know, Superboy shows them. It, he, doesn't, he doesn't need to put on any act. The, the kryptonite immediately starts to weaken him. But the robots get in the way. They stand in the way of the kryptonite radiation. It's not actually how it works, but you're not supposed to think that. And there's only one problem, which is that that kryptonite meteorite has been struck by lightning. Now, you might say, what difference does that make? If it's, if it's from Krypton, isn't it invulnerable? What, what, the lightning won't have any effect on it. But Otto Binder wanted it to have an effect, and he knew exactly what he wanted it to do. If you want to affect Superboy, well, you basically use kryptonite in any of these stories. You basically have to. Uh, there, are, there are workarounds here and there, but usually if you want to affect him, it has to be something to do with kryptonite. And in this case, lightning strikes the kryptonite meteorite, and it has a disastrous side effect. Uh, <laughs> which is that it, it blinds Superboy and his robots to the extent that when they look at something, they turn it to diamond. They get D-vision, diamond vision. Uh, and again, if you're infected by the Stanley virus, one of the first things you're going to ask is, why on earth would that happen? The robots aren't from Krypton. Why would Kryptonite have any effect on them whatsoever? Lightning can't make you turn things into diamonds, no matter what you filter it through. It's The Kryptonite is the key thing here, and Kryptonite does not affect robots that were built on Earth. So why would they be affected? Nevertheless, they are. And Superboy instructs them all to dive into the ocean. They're undying things. They're not going to drown or anything. But he instructs them to dive into the ocean and keep their eyes closed uh, until he can figure this out. In the ocean, they won't, they won't hurt anything. If they turn the ocean to diamond, they'll hurt a lot. They'll kill the planet. But why he does this instead of simply telling them either to keep their eyes closed or to remove their eyes, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm not supposed to know. I'm not supposed to care. But th this is also afflicted Superboy. So he knows that he can't 
look at things, or he'll turn them into diamond. Uh, so he becomes sight impaired. It's, he's not exactly blind. We're not 100% sure if he's looking at something with his unimpeded D vision. Can he actually see it, even though he's in the act of turning it into diamond? We don't know, because he doesn't allow himself to do that anymore. He wears a cloth over his eyes from then on. And wants to figure out a way to reverse the process, of course. He's a whiz-bang scientist. But he can't see what he's doing. He can't see any of the chemicals or any ingredients or anything. He tries. He goes to a laboratory and tries to, to uh, I guess, mix chemicals. But he can't see what he's doing. So it's bound to fail. Uh, eventually, he realizes that in order to keep fighting crime, because it never occurs to him that he's, he's just going to lay in bed, he's going to need a seeing eye dog. And as I mentioned, he already has a dog. So he whistles for Crypto, the super dog who was originally sent in a prototype rocket by Superboy's father, jor before he put his own baby in a rocket. So Crypto is super-powered, just like Superboy. Uh, but he doesn't stay on Earth. The whole galaxy is his playground. So he's out having fun in the galaxy. Crypto is was a very popular character in his own right. Oh my god, his backup stories got tons of mail. Uh, he was very, very popular. Probably the most popular... Uh, Superman side character that existed at this time. This is before Supergirl. Just before Supergirl. But this is before Supergirl. So fans loved Crypto and were happy to see him on any cover. I guarantee you that if you had 10 cents to spend and it was hard earned and it took you a while to get to the shop and you had a bunch of things to choose from, I guarantee you that seeing that this was an adventure that Superboy was going to share with Crypto, rather than just Crypto being a backup speecher, that would do it for you. That would have made you hand over your two nickels, without a doubt. Uh, Superboy decides to whistle for Crypto. He says, you're out and about in the galaxy, you're, you're hopping from planet to planet, but I need you, so you'll come back here. And you're not supposed to tell Otto Binder that, of course, you can't whistle for a dog in the vacuum of space. Sound does not propagate in space. You're not supposed to tell him that, and you're not supposed to, to hypothesize about Superboy having some sort of telepathic connection with his dog. You're not supposed to think about it. When you want your dog to come, you whistle. Unless you're me. <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're little boy Steve, who had one-inch overbite and creepy-looking teeth, so he couldn't whistle. And never needed to whistle for a dog anyway, <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs> you just call him. Uh, Superboy whistles for Crypto, and he arrives. And the joke is already set up, because Crypto is a happy-go-lucky character. He's not dedicated, like Superboy is, to fighting crime. He's a happy-go-lucky, adventurous character. He's a wacky, zany dog of a type that readers instantly recognized and loved. He's a wacky, zany dog. Which means he's going to be a bad, super-seeing-eye dog. He's going to be distracted by the first little thing. He doesn't have seeing eye dog training. Instead, he's our beloved crypto. And that's exactly what happens. He is a terrible seeing eye dog. He he is distracted by the least little thing. Now, Superboy still manages to have adventures. He still manages to, to foil a bank robbery from the Tiger Gang. <laughs> he, he still manages to... He still insists on putting on his civilian clothes and lying to Lana Lang. He still insists on doing that. And eventually, he and Crypto are kind of, sort of working out a kind of working arrangement. Crypto is he's distracted by the least little thing. He wants to chew on bones. He wants to, to chase things. He's, he's adorable, but he's not ready to be a, a seeing eye dog. Uh, but it doesn't matter. He doesn't need to be anyway, because Superboy eventually realizes that the robots that he sentenced to the bottom of the ocean are better. They don't have D-Vision anymore. How exactly we know this is a little bit of a mystery that you will ask yourself about if you are infected with the Stanley virus. He did order these beings to keep their eyes closed at all times, and they call him Master. So, did one of them disobey? And maybe tell the others to? Maybe you should keep an eye on that particular Superboy robot? Uh, it, it becomes apparent, thankfully, that this is a short-term thing, that water, seawater, can counteract this effect. Now, earlier in the issue... Uh, Superboy cries, and the salt water in his tears do not counteract his own division. Unless Kryptonians don't have salt water in their tears, or unless, as you could theorize if you were theorizing about this, but you are not supposed to theorize about this, if you were theorizing about this issue, you might theorize and say, 
well, it was a short term effect. It didn't have anything to do with the uh, with the ocean water. It was going to wear off anyway, no matter what. It was going to wear off anyway. Either way, it, it all is brought back to normal. The robots no longer have D vision. Superboy no longer has D vision. He no longer needs Crypto to be his super seeing eye dog, but he does want to reward Crypto. And an ordinary dog bone will not be enough for a super dog. He wants he rewards him with a dinosaur bone. And again, you are not supposed to tell Otto Binder that dinosaur bones in museums are not made of bone. <laughs> They're made of rock. <laughs> they aren't going to be appealing in any way for a dog to chew on. You're not supposed to mention that. You're not supposed to mention how incredibly irresponsible it would be if they were bone for you to hand one over to your dog just because he was a seeing eye dog to you when they are priceless archaeological artifacts. You're not supposed to think any of that. At all. Crypto is happy at the end. Superboy is back to normal at the end. Lana Lang has been fooled once again. A criminal gang has been stopped. Everything's back to normal. Yay. That's it. Yay. Was it, wouldn't it be wacky if Superboy were blind and needed a seeing eye dog? Wouldn't that be fun? That's all you're supposed to think. And that's what you get in this issue. That's what you get right here on the cover. That's not all you get. You get their backup features here. In this issue, there's a backup feature with Green Arrow, who's a, a guy who can shoot a bow and arrow. Uh, to call him anticlimactic after an adventure of a being who can fly into the sun and back is, is understating things. There's also an adventure by Aquaman. Aquaman was actually in Adventure Comics before Superboy was. And he's stuck in for the long haul. Oh my god. If it wasn't Johnny Quick, it was Aquaman. Oh, it's just... The Aquaman in these backup stories is so incredibly lame. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. In in the backup story in this issue, the bad guy is just an ordinary person. And he punches Aquaman almost to death. It's just, oh, you're trying to foil my plan? I'll sock you in the jaw. <laughs> uh, and uh, and in, 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 there's another backup issue, he, another backup story of Aquaman where he... He leaps on board a villain's vessel at sea, and they net him. They throw a net over him. So it's not a bag net. He's not caught up in the air. They throw a net over him. Six-foot-tall guy, superhero in gold chain mail. They throw a net over him. They don't even fasten it to anything. It's not weighted. They don't, they don't use him being immobilized to wrap him in chains or wire or anything. He just has a net draped over his shoulders, but he's totally immobilized. He, he, has to, he has to just watch while they go about their crime spree until blind, dumb luck frees him from having a net. He doesn't even try to lift it off himself. And another, another Aquaman backup story, the bad guys are on the beach. They've landed their craft. They're getting ready to go in and commit crimes. And one of them looks out to sea and says, hey, look, it's Aquaman. He's swimming towards, towards shore. He's swimming straight at us. That's all he is. He's just doing the butterfly. He's, swim, he's swimming straight at them. He's still at around the breakers. And one of them just takes a gun and shoots him. <laughs> oh, it's Aquaman. Oh, well, let's just shoot him. We, we, we've, got other, we've got banks to rob. <laughs> Johnny Quick, the same way. Johnny Cook is a character who had a mystical formula that he could recite that would give him bursts of super speed. It was totally unclear how that worked. I know you're not supposed to ask, but even for an 11 year old, it was totally unclear. Does, how long does this super speed last? And how fast does it make him? He just said this, this formula not five seconds ago, but now it's, it seems like he doesn't have any superpowers at all. And, and at the end of the story, He's super fast punching all the villains all at the same time, but he hasn't said his formula. So were the, was the super speed carrying from the last time he said it? But in between then and now, the villains were easily able to clobber him. So what is going on here? Not to mention the fact that you don't need to be retroactively reading things into these comics to look at Johnny Quick's outfit and think, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. It's one thing to say, you know, an extraterrestrial teenager is going to wear a blue leotard in the Midwest. But Johnny Quick's outfit, none of the cops, at the end of every episode, of every, every adventure of his, he hands over the villains, the, the bank robbers or whatnot, to the cops. There's not one cop in any of these comics who wouldn't run him in for the way he looks, for the costume that he has. <laughs> it's just... Uh, there, were, there are plenty of backup stories, but if... After a little while, after a very little while, Adventure Comics was given over to Superboy. So there might still be lame-ass backup stories about the Sandman or Aquaman or Johnny Quick or any of these other losers. But you came here for Superboy, who is Superman when he was a teenager. And boy, oh boy, did you get what you came for. Boy, oh boy, did you ever. 
So you, you got a wonderful, wonderful story, provided you didn't think about it. The whole point was to give you a respite from thinking about things. <laughs> the whole point was to do that. You, provided you don't think about it. What would happen if Superboy lost his sight? Well, he'd need a seeing eye dog, but he already has a dog. And scene. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all. Although, just as a, as a side note here before I wrap up, I could go on forever. I can't believe Mike picked this thing. I just can't believe he did. I think he did it because somebody was very nice enough to send him one. Uh, to send him a copy of this. You know, this thing is, it's, what, 70 years old. It's, it's an old thing, almost 70 years old. Uh, that's wonderful. That's delightful. No one, none of you have ever sent me a comic of, the, of that age, and I don't want you to <laughs> because I have them all. I just, I could not imagine flipping through my copy of this thing. It would fall to dust, and that would break my heart. Uh, and Superboy has not been given any of the big one hundred and fifty dollars omnibus editions that that Michael K. Vaughn loves. I would buy this one if there were an omnibus edition of Superboy and an omnibus edition of Adventure Comics. I would buy them both without hesitation. But they don't exist, so and I don't think they're ever going to exist. Uh, but when I was thinking back on this issue, I have been writing for five years now. I've been writing a massive, perpetually growing, epic, thousand-page science fiction, fan fiction novel about the Legion of Superheroes. A Legion of Superheroes, superhero-powered teenagers a thousand years in the future. They come back a thousand years to recruit Superboy. That Otto Binder thought that idea up. But the Legion took on a life of its own. And I love the Legion of Superheroes with a passion. And I have, I have been building slowly a gigantic storyline. What would happen if the Legion really were a Legion? What would happen if it would just keep growing? The United Federation of Planets sanctioned the Legion's charter. But there's nowhere, me nowhere mentioned in the charter is the maximum number of Legionnaires. That's never mentioned. So what if there was a large team? What if, they, what if there was a large team and problems arose from that? And that made me think, you know, I could make up all sorts of characters. I did make up all sorts of characters. But wouldn't it be fun to ransack Adventure Comics and Superman and Superboy for other characters? Wouldn't it be fun to ransack all of these issues for any kind of idea that will come up? Any, any idea that will come up at all, Superboy and Adventure Comics and Superboy, was visited almost every month by, another, by an alien being of some kind or other. And their storylines are always wrapped up in neat little bows. But what if they weren't? What if they weren't? Uh, and I revisited this issue. Because when I was revisiting this issue, I, I, it, was the, it was the last time I ever touched my paper copy. I, uh, when I was revisiting the issue, I thought, well, you know, that's, I mean, it's, it's the crux, of, it's the MacGuffin in the story in this issue. But that's not a bad superpower. If you had it under control, that's not a bad superpower. To have. D-Vision is not a bad superpower to have. It's not a power that Superboy has. Uh, or that most other characters have. What if... What if lightning striking a kryptonite meteorite happened elsewhere in the galaxy? What if it happened somewhere else? And gave someone that power? And what if, instead of it wearing off, they lived with it and honed it so that they could control it? So that they didn't have to use a seeing eye dog. They could control when they were going to do it. And that gave me the idea for Diamond Damsel, who is one of the members of my extremely expanded Legion of Superheroes. My extremely expanded Legion of Superheroes has le levels, like a Legion would. Only the levels aren't seniority, they are power levels. At the top, you have the uh, A-list power level people, people who are Superboy level powerful, people who can threaten a planet. And then you have a layer below that, and a layer below that, a layer below that. And it's all dictated by the regionality of the power, the effectiveness of the power, how much the power wielder tires, how much can they do. So, for instance, Diamond Damsel cannot turn a mountain into diamond. And every, every time she uses her power, it's an exertion. It, it, she needs time to recover. So she's not an A-list character at all, even though her power will work on a lot of the A-list characters. She can, temporarily anyway, turn them to diamond. Uh, which takes them out of action. So she is very effective. But I, I drew that from this issue. I Oh my God, I drew so many things from so many issues of Adventure Comics. So many. Uh, including the first ever appearance of the Legion of Superheroes, which has the mention of a character that I happily used. Happily. Because the, when I started this massive Legion epic, I immediately thought, well, the Legion, they come back a thousand years to recruit Superboy, but they wouldn't just recruit him. If they can recruit Matt beings from the past, super beings from the past, they'd recruit anybody who'd made it into history books. 
including a character who made it into the history books who's mentioned in the very first appearance of the Legion. I just brought him forward as a character. He is at the very bottom of the, the roster. He doesn't have any natural superpowers, but still. So anyway, but anyway, that's a digression. I could talk about the Legion forever. This The only connection here is this is written by the same guy. This was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I think the reason Michael K. Vaughn picked it is because a fan of his was generous enough to send him an issue, to send him the physical copy of this issue. I don't think he had any great desire to revisit Adventure Comics on his own. I think this is the first issue of Adventure Comics he'll ever read, and maybe the only one. Uh, but I... I had a blast <laughs> revisiting this storyline. Just a blast. The only shadow hanging over this week's uh, Epic Comic Book Wednesday is whether or not there'll be any quid pro quo. I have noticed in the past, in 2023, sometimes the pendulum swings back if it swings forward. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes Michael K. Vaughn will pick a comic book that I love, or that we both love, and I will love talking about it with you, but I will worry that the pendulum is going to swing back again. And I'm worried now <laughs> that is going to happen. I'm worried that the pendulum is going to swing back for next time. Uh, because there is there is a kind of a mutually assured destroyer. There is a threat. There is an A-level threat that Michael K. Vaughn has been keeping in his back pocket all this time. Uh, it's called ROM. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the next one will be, but we will find out. We will find out together. He can't be any more of a bullseye than this for me. Adventure Comics starring Superboy with an issue where Crypto guest stars is about as much as you could do. The only thing more you could do would be if the Legion were involved. So, uh, it, for us, I'm concerned. I'm ending the year of Epic Comic Book Wednesday on an incredible high note. Whether or not that will be ruined next week, <laughs> I don't know. I'll find out with you. <laughs> so, I'll wrap this up for now. But I'll be back. Thank you, Book Two.